Hello, this is Joe, and welcome back to the channel. You know, just a few days ago, my good friend James from the DSO Imagers channel reviewed the noise exterminator from RC Astro. And because I love the star exterminator so much, uh, when I saw his video and I saw how much he liked it, uh, I knew that I had to go check it out for myself as well. So if you haven't seen James's video, I'm going to leave it in a link in the description below so you can check that out. And for now, I'm going to install the trial version of Noise Exterminator and test it out. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is go to the Noise Exterminator homepage from Russell Croman's Astrophotography, and we'll click on the free trial. And from there, I'm going to choose Pix and Site. And then I'll add my email address. It will send me an email and give me the instructions of what I need to do to get it installed. So I received the email and the email pretty much gave me instructions and a URL to put in. So we're going to go to resources, updates, and manage repositories. And we'll here we'll click on add. And then we'll paste the URL in that we got from the instructions and hit OK. And then just hit OK. And we're going to come back up to Resources, Updates. Check for updates. And it should download and install the Noise Exterminator. So once it's done checking for updates, you should see the RC Astro Noise Exterminator module and an AI version 1. So I'm going to go ahead and click Apply to these and it's going to do that and then we'll restart Pixinsight and it should be installed for us. We've restarted Pixinsight and we're going to check to make sure that it's installed so we go to processes, all processes and find noise exterminator. Here it is. We'll click on that and from here we'll use the wrench to enter our license that we originally got in the email when we signed up for the free trial. So let's take a look at some examples from the Noise Exterminator. So first I wanted to start with a really older image that I took. This image was the Seagull Nebula and it was taken with a 1600mm Pro and some ZWO filters. I'm going to go ahead and make this a lot bigger here so that we can have a better shot of seeing this through YouTube. And you'll notice that there's quite a bit of fuzz, grain, noise, whatever you want to call it, and in this part of the wing of the Seagull Nebula. And I picked this area here because I really like the detail of this coming out. Now, this is, this is my final image. Um, it's, it's pretty noisy, grainy. And so we're going to go ahead and apply this. And I've already applied it, but so I just have to click Redo so we don't have to wait for it. Um, but it really doesn't take too long. And here's our image afterward. And for all intents and purposes, the grain is gone. Um, and I'm going to zoom in again where we were. And I'm going to undo this. And you can see the, the massive amount of, of grain to, to pull this out at the time. And then I'm going to click Redo. And I guess most importantly, it really didn't mess with the stars uh, like topaz denoise can do uh, if you're not careful. Um, you can also go and zoom in on the head portion a little bit more and I will undo and you could see um, the grain immediately pop out at you and then redo and it's pretty much gone. Now I don't know I I ran this with the sharpness or the detail on the noise exterminator turned up to 90. And it doesn't seem to have affected anything. I didn't get any rings around the stars or anything like that. So um, for the most part, it seems to have been okay, but I don't really see a huge increase in any kind of detail either. Um, I was kind of looking through these lines here and then maybe the ridges of this dust cloud here and I'll go ahead and reapply it and I mean there's a slight change um, ever so subtle take a look at the fossil footprint nebula now I've never shown this image 
um, I was doing this image um, as a test. We had uh, wind slightly over 20 miles per hour, and I wanted to see if I can still image at 20 mile or over 20 mile per hour winds. And uh, it turns out I really can't. Um, the image itself looks okay, um, but if once you zoom in, you could see the every star is is egg shaped um, or worse, um, pretty bad. So unfortunately, we know that uh, 20 miles per hour is the limit that we can that we can do any imaging on. But I did want to use this because there, there's a certain amount of noise and grain in here uh, that. I are almost artificially caused by trying to fix the stars and I wanted to see um, what the noise exterminator could do so apply the noise exterminator and you see the grain instantly go away and unfortunately though once that happens you could really see the stars really pop out at you that that they are um, oblong shaped uh, much more than than before but as far as the noise reduction goes, um, it looks really good. Um, yeah, I really have to, to zoom in. And here it is uh, zoomed out pretty far, or what you'd normally have. There's the, without the, the noise exterminator, and here's with the noise exterminator. So I'm going to take a look at a starless image. And... This is the starless image of um, inside of the Rosette Nebula. And over here on this side, I ran this through the low light filter on Topaz Denoise. And you can see that it's really cleared up um, a lot of the noise that you would get, you know, on the main image here because you could see the grain and um, the stars missing. Or what was left of the stars missing and over here after running topaz um, there's no grain and it's even actually kind of cleaned up a little bit of of where the stars were so we're gonna run the noise exterminator on the original and compare the two and I have to say that after looking at the two of them I think that the topaz denoised did a quite a bit better job on this particular image. I seem to have lost quite a bit of detail uh, in here once I ran the noise exterminator and I also got some fuzzies and, and actually added a little bit of noise or ringing in, in through here where in through here um, with the topaz denoise it's not quite as as prominent. Um, and then zooming out I think that the Topaz Denoise has done a lot better job of um, keeping this detail intact throughout these dust clouds. Um, not that the Star Exterminator didn't. Um, it did much better than, you know, the, the stock image. So, you know, is it working? Yeah, it, it's working fantastic. Now, I've got a, a luminance of M81, and I've done the same thing with it. This is... Um, this is it after I've extremely stretched it in Photoshop. I, I just went in, grabbed the luminance file, and I pretty much sharpened it up and stretched it until it was super grainy. Um, you know, you normally wouldn't do this, but this is for this test, and, and I just wanted to see um, what would happen. And, and this is the same image, but uh, after running through the low light filter in Topaz Denoise and sharpening it up, quite a bit in in topaz and right away it's pretty apparent that you can see th um, that topaz has brought out a ton of detail uh, around the core of the galaxy and with the lines going through and, and around here as well and we're going to run the noise exterminator on this and see if we can attain that same level of detail now I run this at 90 uh, detail and 90 denoise and it doesn't quite get that same level of crispness uh, in the detail as the uh, topaz does again but 
it did do a much, much better job on the stars than Topaz does. Um, for instance, this star right here, it's pretty much round for all intents and purposes. Uh, when you look at what Topaz has done to it, um, it's, I don't know what it's done to it. It's misshapen it. Um, it almost looks like I'm out of collimation uh, from running this. And, and all the little stars around here too, they all have that little funny shape to them. And with the noise exterminator, um, there's a tiny little bit of that. And, and that's fine because I could just turn down the detail, I think, and, and I think it would, it would fix that. But it's nowhere near as bad as what um, Topaz has done, really, to these stars. Um, the, the stars have come out much better in, uh, in the star exterminator. But I could see a massive amount of more detail um, after running Topaz. And again, this image just stretched beyond belief. Um, I would never do this <laughs> normally um, when I'm processing, but again, I just I had to do it for this test, so um, it's pretty interesting, actually. So my thoughts on Noise Exterminator uh, from RC Astro are pretty positive. Uh, I think that it did an amazing job. Um, it's still in the beta release or uh, just released and it's already competing with Topaz Denoise AI for Astro Images. Um, the, the Topaz Denoise did have a little bit more sharpness to the images, but just barely. And also, um, I don't think that you want to sharpen your Astro Images too much because they'll look a little waxy and, and not natural. What the Noise Exterminator does is uh, pretty close. I mean, it doesn't really remove any of the sharpness and it does add a little bit of sharpness and it's it's subtle and it's just, I think it's, it's a really good amount. Now, if you already own Topaz, I'm not sure you're getting um, a whole lot more with the, with the noise exterminator, uh, but you're getting better stars. Uh, it, it just did a, fantastic job. I was blown away at how good um, it did with the stars. It, it didn't mess them up like Topaz can. If you don't have either product and you're not going to do any kind of daytime photography, you're only going to use the this for doing your astrophotography images, then I think I would probably go with the noise exterminator. Now, if you're looking for something that's also going to do daytime photography, then um, Topaz Denoise probably has the nod for me. Just know that you will have to uh, jump through a few more hoops to keep those stars perfectly round and, and not get uh, the weird artifacts that you get from it on your astro images. So I hope you found this video useful or entertaining in some way. If so, please go ahead and hit that like button to help the YouTube algorithm spread this video to more people. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so as well because it does help the growth of the channel a lot. And if you want to see the testing that I did with the 2600mm Pro in bin 2 mode, then you want to check out this video right here.